This is a video review showcasing the Lenovo ThinkPad X-T40 for use in 2023 and onward. This particular model features an Intel Core i5-4300U CPU, two cores and four threads, eight gigabytes of DDR3 1600 MHz RAM, a 240 gigabyte Kingston solid state drive, an Intel dual band wireless AC7260 Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth 4.0, and integrated graphics are Intel HD 4400. This particular version has a display panel resolution of 1366 by 768. However, there is a full HD 1920 by 1080 version as well. The six row spill resistant keyboard is particular to this generation of ThinkPads and beyond. Uh, I don't mind it. And we also have the red track point and also this Mylar Surface touchpad, which does not feature the two buttons that I do prefer, but you know what, it's not too bad. They do operate well enough. Uh, some people call it the clunk pad, but I don't really mind it so much. Featured is the backlit keyboard at uh, two different brightness levels, and I always enjoy that as a feature. The case material is reinforced glass fiber plastic, so you can expect that ThinkPad level durability on this side of the I.O. we have a smart card reader, mini display port, USB 3.0, VGA port. Over here we have a air exhaust grill for the CPU cooler and of course the input for the power adapter. On the other side of the laptop we have an RJ45 Ethernet port, this version of the Kensington lock, a SIM card reader, a SD card reader, USB 3.0 always on, and a microphone and headphone input. On the bottom of the laptop, we have the connection for the docking station. And this version, we have the lithium ion three cell external battery. There's another one on the inside, which I'll show you in a moment when we open this up. And there's also lots of grills for what I would assume is passive airflow and speakers. So for the type of general office work that I do outside of uh, working with computers and computer hardware. This will perform perfectly fine, I think. And you can run things like Office 365, uh, any other email client, uh, quite fluently, Zoom calls, etc. And as you can see, it's with a good solid internet connection. I think you'll be totally fine uh, loading web pages, watching YouTube videos, and just generally getting your basic work tasks completed. The internal speakers aren't terrible. Uh, they're Dolby Advanced Audio Stereo speakers um, with Realtek HD audio drivers. So. Of course, you can always connect a Bluetooth speaker. And the webcam is your standard 720p resolution. Uh, not the best, but certainly not the worst. So you can, of course, connect your X-T40 to a external monitor. And over here, we have an example of a nice 21.5 inch 1080p display. So this monitor in particular supports VGA, HDMI, and DisplayPort. Of course, we can connect with one VGA cable to the X240. Um, for DisplayPort, we do need a mini DisplayPort adapter. So we know we can connect with this VGA cable. And also with the DisplayPort cable, using this DisplayPort to mini DisplayPort adapter. But if your monitor only supports HDMI, um, I was really surprised at this option, but Daisy chaining cable adapters does seem to work. So what I have is the HDMI cable connected to the display and I have this HDMI cable adapter to disp full size display port and further we'll use that full size display port to mini display port adapter and as you can see interestingly enough it does work. So I was actually really surprised by this but it is totally possible. If you are limited to just HDMI, you do have options and these two cable adapters would probably cost about 
maybe $30 Canadian total. So let's take a look inside. All you will need to remove the rear panel is a Phillips head screwdriver and a tool like this or something like a plastic guitar pick to separate the palm rest from the rear panel without scratching it. So first let's take out the battery and let's take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws total. All right, and here's a look at the inside. So here's our internal three cell battery. And when you're performing service, you can unplug it from the motherboard right here. There's also the option to disable it in BIOS, but usually um, I tend to just open it up and disconnect it, perform service and connect it back again. And over here is where I have the 2.5 inch Kingston 240 gigabyte solid state drive installed. You can also put a hard drive if you want, because up here is a WWAN M.2 card port and you can also install an M.2 SATA 3 2242 solid state drive and I'll link to one in the description below. So you could uh, dual boot Windows, Linux, uh, set up your boot drive on the M.2 SSD and have the 2.5 inch bay for storage only or you could run the boot drive off the 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive and use the M.2 for cash. So over here we have the single DIMM slot for your RAM stick. Um, unfortunately there's nothing even soldered to the board and we only have access to one so that's why I have an 8GB DDR3 1600 megahertz Timetech branded RAM. Um, so you can only have your single slot performance but not too bad still for general tasks. Up here we have the heat pipe connected to the CPU and the exhaust fan. I've, I've already applied new thermal paste and it's as simple as removing these four screws with your Phillips head screwdriver and gently lifting up, cleaning, reapplying, and so on. Uh, it doesn't hurt to clean up that CPU fan either once in a while. And here's our Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth card. So I'm just going to cover the basics and if you're looking for something a little more in depth, feel free to leave me a comment below and we can discuss about it. So we got Fortnite loaded up, of course, running with performance and lower graphical fidelity. We're going to keep it native to 1366 by 768 resolution and we'll full screen and we'll see how well that works. Otherwise, other settings are set to low. Uh, we'll keep that frames per second counter a little higher, but I really don't think we're going to get above maybe 30 frames per second. We might have to lower the resolution. All right, so we just landed and Right now we're hovering around mid 20s to maybe 30 frames per second at most. Uh, well, we actually got up to 40 frames per second there for a second. If I can reach 30 frames per second, I'll call this game like okay to play. But let's see what happens when there's a little bit more action on screen. I'm thinking that we're gonna have to lower the resolution a little bit. All right, so I'm in combat with somebody or maybe a bot, I don't know. Making some shots, but as you can see, the screen's kind of bugging out. Um, I gotta take it nice and slow if I wanna hit this guy. Uh, I'm gonna guess that was a bot or somebody who's just new to the game. Uh, because I'm definitely not good at this game and that wasn't very hard to do and it was about 12 frames per second. All right, so what I did was change the resolution to 1280 by 720. Uh, V-Sync activated 30 frames per second and I put everything to low and I also changed the 3D resolution to 60%. It's not going to look great but it's probably going to be playable. Alright so uh, I forgot to press the film button but I did just get somebody here and under the current settings that we have were lowered to 3D resolution. I mean it doesn't look great but it does make it playable at about 30 frames per second. I'll keep going here and see if I can get somebody else as an example. All right, so that was another weird player. Um, 
I swear they all act like bots or they're just like really fresh to this game or like 10 years old. Anyway, um, so if you want to play at this current resolution and on these settings, I mean, you can do it. It's really not that bad. You kind of adjust to it. It's kind of like uh, playing while taking your glasses off. Anyway, let's move on to the next game. And I loaded up Pummel Party, and in order to get at least 30 frames per second, I lowered the resolution to 800 by 600 window display, and basically set the graphics settings to as low as possible, um, just so I could demonstrate that you could still play with this with friends if you wanted to. Let's give it a try. Alright, so while we're running around the map, it looks like we do get 30 frames per second. However, in game, in the mini games, it looks like we're getting uh, up to 60 frames per second at this resolution. So, all right, so I would definitely say Pummel Party, if you're willing to play at these settings, totally doable. All right, so I've loaded up Left Dead 2, uh, something a little more playable at full screen resolution on this laptop. Let's see how it goes. All right, so right now we're hovering around uh, mid 30s to 40, mid 40s up to 50s uh, frames per second. So basically a mixture of low to medium settings, definitely playable. So what I recommend the Lenovo ThinkPad X240 for use in 2023 and onward. Absolutely, if you're looking for a budget laptop uh, that doesn't cost too much and provides all the real world flexibility that you need for general office tasks uh, like gaming, entertainment, and portability. Due to its size, you can easily fit it into probably any backpack, uh, probably really light for traveling. Um, even the 1366 by 768 display panel option isn't really that bad and it's something that I personally would adjust to if I had to. If you feel differently or if you have your own X240, let me know about it in the comments. Uh, specifically, if you've upgraded anything on it, I'd love to hear about it. If maybe you have the i7 version or the 1080p panel, yeah, let me know. That'd be great. So either way, hopefully this helped you decide if the X240 is the right choice for you. Other than that, have a great day. Thanks a lot for watching.